Rockers the movie. Yes, so greetings to each and every one and all of our special panelists. Now, Rockers the Movie, as most of you will already know, is a, a very spectacular and monumental piece of cinema created back in 1978. And now we have this special project happening on the live stage, musically. So I'd like to invite uh, all of our panelists, the members of Kushart, which I understand you were catalysts behind the transition to bring it to the musical stage. Maybe you can start off by telling a little bit about how that idea came about, and then the other panelists can speak about their experience. Greetings. Um, I am Tony Kush. And I'm John Kush. Barry Kush. Yeah. <laughs> um, the idea came about with, um, when Leroy and our manager, including us, we, we came up with the idea that um, we should revive the, the movie by doing concerts using the, the musical aspect of the show, you know? That was how this thing came about. Okay. It, it was really hard work, some sleepless night. Our manager did quite a, a fantastic job. Okay, so uh, Lloyd Parks, maybe you can, as the key musician and band leader, maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, how you were able to help this transition to bring it onto the stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lloyd Parks. Yeah. Well, um, I play a little part in, um, in the rock, you know. I wasn't a, a bass player. I was just playing percussion, you know. <laughs> but um, I thought that this is a good idea. I mean, to reinstate the, um, the rockers. It is more like a tribute to the rockers movie, you know. And I thought that um, I, I'm a builder. I like to build, you know. So I know this... Um, this um, Product of us can go far, you know, because people have been calling for it all over the world. So I was invited by um, Gabriel to be the backing band, you know, for this, and I was happy, you know. And um, that's where it started, you know. Okay, just can you just clarify a little bit there? You mentioned that you play a small part in Rockers, the movie itself, and you say you weren't there in your ordinary role as a bass player. You were there playing percussion? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was a percussion player, you know. Um, do you mean... Ask Mouth, ask Mouth give me that role, you know? <laughs> uh, okay, so who's Mouth? I was just passing through. Uh-huh. You, know, you know, rent some backline equipment and ask Mouth to come in like this, you know? Yeah, and incidentally, it was uh, my first drummer in We The People Band. Nobody knows that, right? Okay. Ask Mouth, great Ask Mouth. <laughs> Okay, so since we're talking about Horsemouth and his great versatility, Horsemouth, uh, we've got some video clips lined up here. So we want to, just since uh, you know the, the film itself has not screened this year, we screened it last year. So let's take a little look at video clip one, and then we'll see, uh, Horsemouth, what you can tell us about this portion of the movie. Yes, that's me. That's Father St. Maxi Avenue. That's where I live. That's my yard. Real, that's my real house for two. No prop. Father St. Maxi Avenue. Father St. Maxi Avenue. Yeah, those are two good. Those are three great aunts, man. The great Tower Mark Cook. He has the end there. And then you have... And then you have um, Bobby Ellis. Yeah. 
Man, we'll the next one. Great man. We know that from big you know? from Bobby know that the one one man. died long time. Rastalashir man. So, so come on, 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 come Herman Marquez, Tom Marco, Marco. and Bobby Ellis. Those are the three yards, man, with dirty Harry. Okay? And that's my yard where I live. For the St. Maxwell Avenue. A, a very old lady named Granny Besh, she gave me a one small room. It's like 12 by 12. You know what I mean? So if you, you soon see that room. It's have everything. Say when I go home at night and I hear that dub, my head feels nice, you know? So what I'm trying to say is like um, the burning spear, you know? Um, like in the movie, all the friends them in the movie, Kidios Guy, a virgin, in the movie. I know Kidios a long time. But I'm singing a tune here right out in the street, you know what I mean? Okay? Yes. And then for the St. Maxwell Avenue by the old lady there. She gave me that place. So after I start the movie there, I go uptown to live, you know? So, um, and Herman Marquis, the saxophone there, he, he died. Like, he gets sick, you know? Get old after a time. Okay. Just like Byron Lee. And, you know, so I'm still here. You okay. see me. People ask me, oh, oh, all are you ask me? I say, yeah, that's my secret, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why? Yeah, the mom's something like a youth want to take me on, you know. Uh, watch here, my brother. I'm just saying, yo, no ramping up. <laughs> I'm still ready, you know, so. Okay, yeah. so. And, yeah, so, no, sorry, so sorry. Yeah, so you just mentioned, of course, that your great friend Kidusai features prominently in this movie. So we'll just play a little clip of track two, sorry, video clip two, and we'll see, Kidus, what you can remind us about. <laughs> The bomb buck lad do you rest man? What? Cha, I wanna say make the man a hustle in your ass. That's for real. Yeah, that's for real. Yeah, that's for real. Sure. Sure. Right. Real vex for you. You know why? Right? Jacob owe me here. I play an album here, man. Free rod in shop. And he owes okay, me for the pay. But because he's seen me in a movie, he thought I don't want the money. So I wait. You know what I mean? He comes and see. Won't be too long. All of 
the suffering and wrong soon will be right oh yes yeah yes keep the faith my brothers and sisters it's the cross that you be and fear not say it shall law whatsoever ever man so it They all will reap the fruits of their labor. Yes, they will in the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So seek ye good and not evil. Oh, I beg you, my brother. So, Kidusai, what can you tell us about recording that track and filming it for the movie? Uh, greetings. That's love. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. In 1976, I had met Ted Buffalo first with. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No one. Jack Ruby. And so I had been recording this song at the same studio, and he came in with Jack Ruby. So I heard it and said that he was doing this movie. And so if I would sing the song for the movie. And in 78, when he came, or 79, they were about. I did it over for the movie, yeah. Okay, and um, for each of you, Kiddus and Horsemouth, what was it like to actually appear in the film? I mean, had either of you had any kind of acting experience before or anything on screen like that? Well, uh, you're naturally an actor because you're on the stage of life, right? And when you go on stage for concerts, you sort of put into that position, right? And we all only played our natural. It was no script that we followed. It was all on natural, right? So when Horsey tell you, said that is where I live, right there, so. And throughout the movie, it was natural, simple. Capturing I and I liberty and style. See, Isis. Yes, and Horsemouth, what would you say? How did it feel for you to be starring yes. in the film? No, I was trying to say what Kidios I say. In other words, when you, you know, this movie didn't have no script, okay? No script written down. It all come out of my head, and this Greek guy, Ted Bapalokos, is a nice dude. And he, a nice man, and he thinks about Jamaican. Seem like how his father is a monk, you know? In Greek, Greece, you know? Living in a monastery, okay? And, and, and this virgin, he loves Rasta. Like Rasta remind him of his father and the culture of Greece, you know what I mean? So he, he, he decided to, to, to do this movie. But what I was saying about Kidiosai, uh, Kidiosai was trying to explain that we deal with situation. It's very easy, you don't have to have a script. When you have a situation, I'm saying, Kidiosai, you want to say, we are going on my son, and the brother say, he's not going to thing. So go to him, make him give. So when Kidiosai go to him, say, yo, what do you think we ask more gear? It's very easy. You understand me? It's a situation and then we talk around that situation and, and, and build it up more. Do you understand? So you don't have to have the script. It all come out of your head, you know? And me and Bob, like for instance, the turntable club. I don't want to get all Kidiosai. <laughs> 
Then you don't know, I tell you something. The turntable club scene. I used to go to the turntable at night with my girl, you know, and my record. And I say, Mary Tone, can you play that tune up for me? And them say, put down the man, you play it later. And I say, one, two, three, four, five, then in the morning and drinking and getting great. And I say, Mary told me, I have to go home now. I'm still don't play my song. So that's why I do that scene in, in turntable clubs in, at, at Reddy's Road, upstairs. Jamaica know what we're talking about, okay? You know what I mean? So we just say, well, I go up there. Just I tell you the situation, we can go up there and just take over. So when we go there, we have a guy playing a disco beat. And, and we just say, yeah, I'm gonna like that, the, the mood I'm gonna. And my friend do it, I say, yeah, we're gonna change the mood. But what I'm trying to explain to you that, Mary told, you go to university, okay? Me, I don't go to know. All I go is Alpha Boy School. But, but what I'm saying to you, it takes three hours to say, you guys can sit here. Stand up or leave. These seats are for reserve. Yeah, because every time you have a little drink up around me, he, he go like this. And I say, I'll see you tell one, take one click. And they say, you, 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 you guys, guys. And I say, I say, cut. Three hours, you understand, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you just went spontaneous, natural, same way like in the recording studio. Okay, well, we've got a couple of uh, last short video clips to play. So again, just to see what testimony we can get from the great people from the movie. So give us a little bit of uh, video clip three. And Horsey, we'll see what you can tell us about this one. Don't come up at all, you know, you get out of the business, you know, Rasta. Just behave, man. Just behave, man. Just help him out, the bar. A boss, what you do? What you do? I'm all right, what you want? Just want to listen to me, man, and fight me down, man. They like to give me what I'm told you, you know, see? That's the great leg of beef. My record. I record, yeah. record, I sell record. We produce we some like vision you know, for them as well. Deal, them, man. Deal. Yeah, yeah, man. Listen to me, man. Play two MC for you, man. Just give me. He forgot it's a movie. I told you, I heard it. Joe Gibbs, he forgot it's a movie. He's so mean. I have my drum over there. That's it's so I mean. It's not real. Play, so you just want to go play your drum. Oh, take time. Take time. Give him a little bit. I'll show you some better drum, man. And he think it's real. You know, it's not so far. All right. All right. Stop that. I am going to give you one chance. And if you blow it, you never even walk back through that gate again. I am going to give you 200 records. And when I give you these 200 great, records, Joe Gibbs. you just take it Joe and Gibbs. go on. And you make sure you yeah. come back to me and this date that you sign in my book, right? Yes, my boss. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Wait. Let me tell you the truth. Joe Gibbs, he's so mean that if you got some movie, if you got some just some movie, it's a prop. If you if you give me a record, after you come up with a scene, I give it back to you. You know how the movie to you. But he's, I say, um, Sir Gibbs, give, um, give me two of your things, you know, and we just go make some money and come and come pay, you know. And I say, oh, give? I don't give. And then it's about 10 times you say that. Cut, cut, yes. You know what I mean? You don't want to give. You want to be on the flame. Okay, but... Just that little part that you have. You want to be on the flame the whole day. Just for that little part you have. And, and that was how we make records. You see, he was making records. That's how we make records in the day. You have a stamper. Goes up, down, down. And you have the vinyl. You make it, you put it there in the records. And it cut around. So we Jamaican been doing vinyl for years. You know what I mean? You come with, with that computer now. Okay, so... You know, you're the real team. Yeah, but, yeah, sorry. yeah, don't mean to cut you, but the question is, because uh, if people check the history of the great Leroy Horsemouth Wallace, they'll find that he's been involved in printing album covers at Studio One, for instance, as well as playing on them. But is selling records for producers like Joe Gibbs something that you ever did? Or was that just part of the plot that was written into the movie? You mean if I were a producer song for myself? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? No, the question is, did you, were you ever a salesman for other producers? No, I used to be a salesman for myself. Okay. And, and this is something, uh, it's a secret. My friend, my boss, Coxon is dead, so I can talk. You know, Coxon give me $50 a week, okay? 
When I go there, I go there. I learn three trades at Alpha. Printing, music, and tile making. You know, tile the floor. Okay? So, I, I, I start out as a drummer on the road for Barry and Lee, all those band, the Mighty Vikings. And then I itch with Coxon to print his label. So one day, the drummer, Phil, didn't turn up. And I, in those days, you just sneak into a, a drum board. Nobody knows who's playing the drum there. You know? And I play five songs. And uh, them say, oh, you're a drummer with it. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. And I play five songs. And when I come out, Coxon, he always wait till 6 o'clock before he come and I listen to all the songs he do for the day. And then him say, Jackson. He calls everybody Jackson. He said, Jackson. It's like say, you have to be the drummer you know, and stop with the printing, you know. But I was telling you, I used to print label. And then when Cox not looking, you see this waist here? You can hold some help, you know, just shoot it up between you. And, you. and when you draw in the belly, and when you're walking out, nobody don't see. You have a puff of record. One day, one day it was a holiday. And I, and I didn't have some money. I want some money. You know, I sometimes I have a lot of kids, you know. I tell you though, next time I see I tell you how much. <laughs> but then Cox see me see, stealing the record. And when he wait until I walk out and go down a little in a bush to hide the records. Yeah, I used to be a salesman, man. Somebody tell me in a record shop, I want Etos on top. He said, all right, I bring you two dozen. You know, because I only get $50 a week, you know, so. I used to be a salesman for myself, okay? <laughs> I so, see what you mean. I, 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 will, I will give you more in a book when I write. Okay, but anyway, thank Coxon, you. he called me, you know, and me, two of us, me and the next printer. So he was boxing up the printer, bye, bye. But me, he, was, he didn't ready for me, his friend named Bob Eyes. A brown man, and he hold me. And then Bob Eyes like, like a slap, man. And you know, in Jamaica, you have a bush in you know. You edit, it's like marker, but nothing is there. Just a bush in your trim it and look very straight. I run right through that. Pay my cash. <laughs> I didn't want Coxon to give me a box, so. <laughs> okay. Thank yes. you. Now, moving back to moving back to the great Kidusai. Um, one of the maybe uh, somewhat unusual facets of your career is that, as far as I'm aware, you were never really affiliated with a vocal group like most other artists passed through that before going solo. So I wondered if you could tell the good people here at Rilta Tom Sunsplash a little bit about your journey in music, how you uh, ended up recording the track Graduation in Zion, which as you were explaining before, you have recorded it earlier on and then redid it for the movie. And if you could tell us a little bit about what the song is actually about. All right, we started out, um, I'd say, uh, the first slap on my backside when I came out of uh, mom, you know? And so I shouted or yelled in protest. And hence, since then, I sing protest against injustice, aggression in the earth. All right. I started singing from about four years old. Uh, singing freely, everybody could hear. If you wanted me to sing, you'd have to bribe me. So you'd pay me and I'd sing, right? So high school, on the choir, sing for every occasion. I, the school went into a competition and I won a, a competition. The then governor of Jamaica, Governor Blackburn, asked for encore, so I did it over, right? Started recording maybe about 17, but never released any music. At one time, possibly the most recorded, unreleased artist in Jamaica, up to maybe about 80 or so. Uh, I was a member of Russ Michael and Sons and Eagles. Oh, yes. From like in 72, right? So I did sing with a group with Mikey. Right? Okay, I see. The um, track in the movie was, I think, the second released. I did security in the streets first. Right. right for the B Street eh, at the time. And uh, that's it. Uh, in the yard, uh, kid sized here. 
you know, they are rockers still. And we're still here giving thanks. Thank you. So, in the, the message, the Aluta continues, the fire not stop burn, and it will continue to burn. See? So, I and I music is that spark getting to be a flame again. Rastafari. Thank you. And Kushart, can you tell the people a little bit about your group and uh, the history of your group? Well, the group started out in the early 80s. Kushart started out in the early 80s. And um, we have a lot of songs written, so we push our efforts in those songs to make it materialize into this time. We, we, we never found out that we could have um, be so successful in this time, but we did fight back, did fight in, that, in those times to make it right for this time. Yes, um, Push Art is a group. We do uh, art, visual arts, and we do music as well. You know, we started all the. I started off with the music first, and then Barry Ant Anthony came in, joined us, joined me, and did art and music. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the two disciplines in one. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's performing true. and visual art. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Now, when we look at uh, the artists that we have with us on this panel, everyone is really actually very multifaceted when you delve into their careers. Yeah, yeah. And when we think about the great Lloyd Parks, most of us know him as a bass man and the man who was there as the band leader for We The People and behind the great Dennis Brown for many years and many other artists. But when you uh, turn the clock back a little further, you find uh, Lloyd Parks in a very different role. So if we can switch over to the audio and you give us a little bit of track four and we'll see Lloyd Parks, what you could tell us about this. At the time, I was 18 years old. That's where I started, you know? And when we went to Studio One first, me and went with Vernon, who was my partner. We sang, sounded good, harmonized, well harmonized. Don't be say, Jackson, go home and listen to your radio. You understand me? So we come back with a tune, this tune, have mercy, Mr. Percy, I can't find a cent to pay my rent. He said, go into the studio. <laughs> So that was how this song was um, the birth, you know? Yes. And I can tell you, Studio One is really uh, like an institution because um, you, have to, you have to know what you're doing. You have to be good for Cox and Don't Beat record you, you know? So I was overwhelmed at the time when Mr. Boy going to the studio, you know? And then went to him, and for two, three, four, five weeks, six weeks, no song now play on the radio, was always listening out. And one evening, boy, at dinner time, turn on the radio, your song said, Have mercy, Mr. Percy. <laughs> I never remember that I ate my dinner, man. You know? So, 
it was a good, good, good feeling. And, you know, it, it was really a good journey for me, you know? Okay. So you ended up, you did an album's worth of material at Studio One. Yeah. And then the group went on to work with producers like Lee Scratch Perry and a few more. Yeah, man. And Lee, then you, you went, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Lee Scratch, Lee, Lee Scratch Perry was one of my top producers, you know? I rate him up to this day, you know, for the, song, for the works he done, did, you know? Lee Perry was a man like this when he, he called her to do a recording. Him get some things out of you where you never even know what you have, you know? The man who don't red label back, <laughs> he's always drinking red label wine, you know? And with him spliff and thing, and, but trust me, him say, you say you, you're going to be the top bass player, you, like that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know I'm in the top ten. Some people say number one, but I don't like number one. I like to be in the top ten. I don't exalt myself. I like to be exalted, you know. So, but um, it was a wonderful journey for me, you know. And um, right now I'm celebrating. I'm um, 45 years Lloyd Parks and We the People Band. It's a milestone. 45 years. <laughs> yes, um, and tonight. We'll give you a splendid performance from the rockers. I can tell you that. Okay? Yeah, man. Yes, thank you. Now, we were talking before about Horsemouth as a multifaceted individual. We know him as the great drummer, the man who drummed on Burning Spears' formative albums at Studio One, and many other greats. But there are other sides to Leroy's career. So let's take a little listen to track 13, and we'll see what you can tell us about it. Where I and I belong, check it out. West, Sinaya. Put I and I know in there, no I. Then which country I and I belong, check it out. Watch out. I got three Sinaya original players. Try to find out what I and I is all about. In the meantime, I mean That song is called Fabian. You know what? I used to do a lot of things like blow the melody because that's me. That, that remember that's that that's not Augustus Pablo. That's Orson. Okay. And the melody, okay? And it's called Fabian. And the rhythm, I made the rhythm too. Wanna give you a secret? It's a song like if you feel like making love, on the far above, ride on. You know that song, ride on. I think um, Isaac Hayes sing that song. You know, and then the bridge. It's do your, do your thing is what you're talking about. Yeah, that's the song. We, we, we Jamaicans, we listen to a song, and then we play the rhythm. And that's what the song is all about. So, me there. And, and the words, they are from Mutabaruka. You understand? I see this magazine, Kapisa Go is called a swing magazine, and Mutabaruka was talking. We are not belong. It's all about, um, we are not West Indian, you know? So... People call us West Indian. So it's the Indian. You know? The, the, yeah, you understand? So it's not nothing wrong being Indian or being Chinese or being whatever. It's just that they describe us. We, the Ashanti black man that come from Ghana and say, you understand me? And then they, 
Then they say, you know, man, West Indian. And a lot of us in Jamaica and in the Caribbean opposed to the word West Indian. It's like, it's a colonial thing, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong, you know. There are a lot of people in the colonial country. Jamaica is more colonial than anything, I tell you. Tell you the truth. They, they, will, they can preserve that, but you see, Bob Marley is gone. We are still here. You know what I mean? I don't know they're going to preserve that. You understand me? Maybe by the dance art thing and, yeah. That's getting weird. That's not good for your children. Some of the singers, them, good real singers. Trust me. Dance are you them. I respect them. Them who say good things and try to uplift things like Bob Marley and the rest of them try to do. Because it's a work. It's a work, you know. It's not just playing music and get some bag of money. You understand? And you reach and see, so you live up on the hills and, and you advertise it, the bands and yeah, do you understand me? Do you understand me? Yeah, no, you don't say I love you now. Yeah, a serious thing to Jamaica. Yeah, because like when you play the, when you play the music, it's like you're doing something for to build Jamaica. Right now I'm talking, I'm trying to build my country. Can you see what's the problem it is? It's a nice country, but just like anywhere else, you know what I mean? Yeah, right wing, left wing, this blah blah center, you understand? Just like anywhere else. You know what I mean? But the music and the culture, you know what I mean? There's people like you who is here, tell you the truth, that build us the culture. Yeah, you call us for an uh, interview, and we are here, we get the opportunity to say hello. Do you understand? Otherwise, yeah, we don't get that. Uh, may I have a birdie? So, truth? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Leroy, yes. I have a question, I'm here. Uh, so you said the, 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 the movie is ordinary living in the ghettos and there's this element that is the motorcycle and the motorcycle has been highly celebrated by reggae music, by tunes, by S19 Skank or Yamaka Skank. Uh, I have two questions about the motorcycles. Uh, the first one is... Uh, uh, I think it was very important for the ghetto dwellers, the motorcycle was easily or hardly affordable for the dwellers, for the ghetto people. And the other one is, uh, were those motorcycles very often stolen, as in the case of the film, in, in the places, as in the dance halls or in the, in the yards, in the, in the ghettos? My brother, let me tell you something. It's Gregory Isaac's bike, okay? I want you to all know this, because sometimes, you, maybe I'm not here, you don't know the truth. There's a lot of truth you don't know. So let me tell you now, the bike belongs to Gregory Isaacs, not my bike. So Gregory get paid for three things. Get paid for the bike, to sing at the theater, carry theater, slave driver, get paid, and for acting. You get cheap pay. That's my friend. He was the only one believe I can do a movie. As a little young drummer walking with two drums in the back pocket, walking up and down Kingston, you understand? Know but but to, to, to answer his question, what you say again? What's that again? Come again? Yeah, yeah. The, the motorbike. Well, the motorbike, my bridging, is like, it's a part of your revolution with a young youth, you know, because the first thing you can't reach, you can't buy a car, you're coming from a bicycle, so you hold a bike. So when a man say hold a bike, he say, yo, Frankie, we live on the same a bike, you know what? Uh, can't beg him a, a ride. And he can't beg him a ride. Tomorrow the bike's stolen, but in the movie, the bike was stolen for truth. Listen, there's a guy, my friend, my bad man friend, he died now, me and Juno Skull from the Matches Lane. Yeah, he just come out of jail and thing and, you know what I mean, he come to me, ask me what I want to be in the movie. So in those days, somebody give you 500 Jamaican dollars, a lot of money. That's 1977. So I thought he'd go on home and, and he get the money and satisfy. we supposed to do a, a, a scene with the bike in Fern Gully, down in Ocharias Radio. So when you wake up in the morning, at, because we are all proper now, we, we stay in this hotel for two months at the Sheraton. We, anywhere we have to go, we have to tell Buffalo Costa the diary to where we're going, okay? We, we, we are props. Everything, all the money that you see, it's prop, belong to the movie. You understand me? So, a guy named Juno Skull, he came in the, in, in the night when we go going to bed at the, the shirt and they steal the bike. So when I wake up in the morning to go to, to Fern Gully now to do my part, I right, uh, say, yo, security, <laughs> where the bike there? He say your friend, you know the, you know the one in the blue, plants it out. He say, kiss me neck. <laughs> ah, Juno Skull. Do that, man. So, 
He has a friend that play football, a good friend. Soon remember his name, Desi Wave name, from Manchester Lane. So he call, call down there. And then he hear a dog. You know, in Jamaica, you have a dog like, ow, ow. And you got a man go, hoo, hoo. And all kind of sound. So he said to me, ah, see, you know which part of the man? You see where me and Dirty was pushing the bike? That's Big Yard, down Princess Street. So he was at Big Yard. So they, they catch him and they bring him, the police, to the, to the shirt and with the bike. And, they, and the policeman said to me, Ass mouth. I'm going to lock him up, you know. I'm going to lock him up. I said, no, no, man. I'm going to lock him up, man. I get by the bike, make him go on. Yeah, trust me. So the bike was stolen okay. for you. Okay. A lot of things you see in the movie was for real. No joke. Okay. Jamaica, they must be proud. You make a movie. It only movie so real. If everything's not real, like, like 90% of it is real. You understand me? So Thank kid you. Kid side there. And you must sit down there, sir. And I know, for us, kid your side. A real kid your side. And then you know, ask more. So it's, we try to make it real. So Jamaican, must be proud of yourself. Because we have big brain, you know. But Hollywood not have enough more, you know. I think it's true. Okay. Bless it, love. Thank you. Bless it. So we're, uh, we're going to move to question and answer in a moment. Put the platform to the good people in the audience to allow you to put your questions to our special guests. But first, if we have some, yes, questions down. Um, it's more like a, a comment, you know. I remember when I was in, went to Jamaica for the very first time in 1996, and Pete and me, we were staying in the countryside, what the people refer to as bush, you know. And it was, I think, after the first day or something, I said, oh man, this place is full of natural-born actors. You know, you could have every Shakespearean tea theater and they're just in front of you. And in my opinion, films like The Heart of the Calm Rockers or In the Yard, where Kiddo's Eye is now also a part of, you know, need to go worldwide. And I just say thank you, you know, gentlemen, for bringing this realness, you know, on, on stage, which is something very special. I'm, I'm not sure if you have a comment. It's not really a question, but it's just like, an observation I have. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. A moment. I'd just like to say that um, Jamaica is a very special place. And the Rastafari and Ivar Tong and I said, Ja, Mek, Ya. Now carried beyond the sea to a place named Jamaica, which from this island the most defiant spirits of Africa awoke in the Mama, in, not in the Mount, but the Maroons, right? Out of the Maroons and that defiance like Haiti, a similarity in that defiant spirit, awakens a Marcus Garvey, whose only purpose and aim was to awaken the minds of the masses of the slaves and their offsprings in the West. All right. Then comes Rasta Far I. Those without fear. Defiant to chaos in any form. So the music that comes out of these offsprings is constantly defying towards misuse and abuse in any form away to our fellow human beings as we should be shepherds, husbandmen, husbandwoman, caretakers for mama earth which our leaders <laughs> are sick, the mindset. So to reshape, reawaken the mindset of people is what our music serves. And so we are these. The Aluta continues, the fire keep burning, Rastafari. Thank you. 
Okay. So now we've reached the question and answer section. So who would like to put... Okay, we've got a question at the back. Uh, gr greetings from Manchester, UK. A uh, question for Horsemouth from a, a fellow drummer. I just want to get a bit of insight into your playing style. Anyone that's heard the, the big man play, I think you'll agree he's pretty unique in his style, whether it's a one drop or steppers, rockers rhythm. So a lot of people have, have said that you yourself invented that style of playing the drum set. So if you can give us some kind of story where that came from, if the story's true, which producer you were with? Was it Jonah Burning Spears session or was it with Joe Gibbs or just a bit of insight into the actual the, dr the drum patterns and, and where you get them from? Yes, yes I'm very glad you asked about that. You know what I mean? Where is the drumming? It's always been from a long time. Like my old grandmother is a Pokominion drummer. You know? Like, give me a little piece of the Pokominion. Communion, right? And you have you have a lot of different drummers. You have Kumuna, Pokominion, John Kuno. John Kuno is where we, in America you call um, Halloween's Day. You dress up you like your mother, you say the ass mouth. It's a culture that Jamaica inherit from. Some of it is African, Pan African business, some of it is colonialist. You know what I mean? Like the you understand? But Jamaican people have good strife for the music. Now we see the jump pattern now like um, coming from Skia. Ang, 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 we play back over at Coxon. Coxon always come in American record and say, Jackson, play back this so we can play back all those songs in reggae. Yeah, did you know that all the Tchaikovsky beat, there's a Rastaman beat in it, look how slow it is, and I want jam. You must understand that about reggae music. Trust me, in every, in, in every music in the world, there's a one job you can find. When I was a little youth, I, could, I was thinking about that. So my mind get very pre precise with timing. So. So when I say, when, when Bernie Spears say, eyes green and gold, it's a rainbow. Eyes green and gold, it's a rainbow. The rainbow. The rainbow. Whoa, the rainbow. You know, that's the chant, okay? Because you say the straight folk, can you say, whoop, tap, whoop, tap. Funky, you know, hip hop. You can, you, you can change the beat, but see the, the Jamaican musician, the drummer, yeah, I love the, the, the Skeptalize. They make, they create the Jamaican music. So, when those bridges gone, I come with the roots right reggae. A lot of drummer play for the money in the studio, but they don't understand the playing part. I used to go to the dances and see how people dance. And you see, a good drummer must be a dancer, trust me. So you can create some beat in the head. So, you understand me? If you're going to be a drummer, you're going to be a good dancer. You go to the, the dance at night time when you were young. Trust me. So okay. I, I used to do that. I didn't really have no mother. When I'm young, 15, I have no mother, no father. So I go everywhere on my own. You understand me, sir? That's, that's straight four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. That's how we create the rockers. That's the rockers beat. You understand, people? As a first rockers beat, trust me. Yeah. And the Bird okay. Spear album, when they sing Ice Green and Gold, it's a rainbow. You understand, Bridging, so? Ask more play, ask more, and a little tune. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and who. Yeah.
Yes, um, I have a question, uh, surprising, uh, surprisingly not in this direction, but in this direction, because um, as I know, um, there's uh, one man who has birthday today, and um, you read at the Wikipedia the wrong date, but I'm quite sure I'm right to say greetings and happy birthday, Mr. Horsey! Yeah, yeah, thank you. You know, sometimes I forgot about this birthday thing. Trust me, you know I tell you that. After so much years, I have nothing on sometimes thinking about struggling, looking out for your kids. Sometimes I don't remember. But I always remember my kids' birthday, my daughter. But me, my own, I forgot. Somebody remind me today, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. It run in my head to tell you, you know, but I don't like telling people about myself, you know. Like, so, thank you very much. You make you feel good. I'm gonna dream about this. <laughs> and hopefully, you all can sing better than me, maybe as good as them, and maybe with a, law, a short um, happy birthday. Maybe we try. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Aussie. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you made me want to cry. Tears. Yes. I never get this in my life. I never. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yes, my graduate from Sri Lanka, come on. See it? Yeah, I want to tell you all your people a secret too. In Jamaica, they sell my house, okay? I have nowhere to go when I go back to Jamaica. I just got to tell you. So don't feel no way. I saw us most stay. Yeah. But, but I appreciate things like this, you know? Yeah. And the birthday gift, trust me. I love that. Give thanks. Yeah. Um. Um. Hello, everyone. While we are still on the celebrative moment, um, I would like to take this time out and ask you all to help me to celebrate with our management, Mrs. Gabrielle Brown, please stand. Yes. And Mr. Joel Brown. Gabriel, come in. Today, while other people go on honeymoon and celebrate their anniversary they are here working we'd like to extend love to both mrs and Ms. mr and mrs brown today is their first anniversary thank you thank you thank you thank you much Well, personally, I think that's about the nicest way we could possibly end the Reggae University sessions for 2019. So at this moment in time, I would just like to thank my fellow co-panelists, Ellen Collings and Pete Lilly from Rhythm Magazine in Cologne, Germany. Pierre Tosi, broadcaster from Bologna, Italy. And we also have our assistant, Julia, and our other assistant, Flotziana as well as the sound man, Hector. Please give them all a round of applause. At 9 p.m. At 9 p.m. tonight on the main stage, you will have the Ruckus Show featuring these good people here. Do not miss it. And we hope to enjoy the rest of tonight, the rest of the festival, and we hope to see you all next year. Thanks.
Yeah, bless, bless. Thank you. Thank you.